Here's what I'm doing today. I'm making strawberry peach sorbet that you can actually make into margaritas. On a summery hot day, there's nothing better than this refreshing, delicious sorbet slash margarita. And I make this basil sugar. You can also make it with mint. You can use both. And it is divine. Let me show you. First, wash the peaches and strawberry. Cut them into chunks. Put them in Ziploc bags and freeze them for 3 hours. Place them into the blender. Add half of lime. 4 to 5 shots of vodka or tequila. Half cup of simple syrup. Pour it into a deep dish. And keep it in freezer until it's time to use it. Let's make the basil sugar. Add quarter cup of cane sugar into a food processor and five to seven leaves of basil. Delicious. This is absolutely yummy. If they say a few times already. I was making it. So you do just drizzle a little bit of that basil sugar on top, which gives it crunchiness. Do you hear the turkey outside? More you drink, less you hear. Especially turkeys and children. Cut you in there. You do what you need to do. Hey, well, this is what I need to do. Mm. I'm gonna try this thing. Mm. <laughs> this is so mm. uh, good. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, what a morning! I got nice, super good. I mean, I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. Yes, yes. This is this is definitely good snack for um, the morning. This is Que Onda, yo soy Eduardo Fernández. Tengo esta mañana a Paulina Brown de Bohemian Beach. Oh my God, es un concepto que mi amiga Paulina Brown es, um, eh, pues, este, desarrolló durante el tiempo de pandemia. Es un libro. Would you be so kind to point your book towards that camera? Absolutely. Camera one, camera one, please. There you Hello go. And buenos dias. <laughs> muy bien, muy bien. There is the photos. Okay. So basically, um, that book was created during pandemia time, right? You say, what am I gonna do? That is so correct. Tell me, tell me how everything starts with the book, Paulina. And and w first, w w tell me a little bit about you, your background. You're from. Yeah. I'm from Czech Republic, yes, and yeah. the Bohemian Peach, the name of it is actually the Bohemian, that's where Czech Republic is, you know, mm -hmm. or the Bohemia is in the Czech Republic. And then the peach, I'm um, Georgia Peach. So, um, so I uh, created this book last year over pandemic. And the reason for that is because I used to be, a, or I still am, I'm, I'm a stylist and I do commercials and photo shoots and that all went away so i wanted to kind of um <coughs> reinvent myself and do something i can create and thought about all my passions what do i like what I like to do and cooking and food is my obsession you know it's my it's my passion so i started to uh, creating create this book and took a lot of pictures with uh, along with my uh, friend photographer tim and we created this beautiful book, you know, and it's a storytelling. It's not just a cookbook, it's a storytelling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You kind of um, put some kind of um, story behind the, the food, mm -hmm. which one of the things that you told me right away was it's about love. That's what yes. you said. Yes. You, you didn't say it in the morning in the videos that we were doing. Yes. But um, you said the word love, and that was very interesting to hear that. Um, because um, that's that's love is what we need <laughs> right now. We need so much 
love. Sí. We need the human connection. And I think food connects people, you know, connects families, connects friends. And I wanted to really connect people and bring them back to the table when they can share stories, when they can share food and laugh. And, uh, you know, the simple things in life, they are so important, you know. Exactly. And uh, we were talking also about um, how the kitchen is really the center in of the in, whole house. Yes. The whole house. Most of the families um, in, in uh, probably here, everywhere. I mean, you can do the most beautiful dining room, and this and that. And, uh, yeah, sometimes you end up eating there, uh, right there at the kitchen. I like the kitchen that has the, the little table there. Because yes. that's something, I don't know, there is something so cool. Probably the stove has a lot to do, the, the, the heat. The and uh, yes. And, and mainly that um, for generations, mm -hmm. uh, probably that thing will change. But the women is the one there, right? And then some. it's a way of being with her. Like, that's uh, hey, right, that's hey, right. This. It connects us, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Unless they have, you know, the husband is like, well, you do the homework with them, <laughs> things like that. You think uh, we're losing values on that regard, family, dinner? Is it important? Let's put it this way. Do you think it's important to have discipline when, when you're growing a family? Even mm -hmm. even two guys that had no, mm -hmm. they have no, um, no kids, right? Right. Just dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. dogs. Do you think there should be an agreement and say, hey, lunch or dinner or two lunch? I know you're busy, I'm busy, but let's do two lunch a week. Uh, on the, hey, I'm in Beaver Highway, I'm in Pino Suarez, I'm, and I'm here. Let's, we're, you know, no excuse. Let's have two lunches and, of course, every night dinner, probably one night. Mm -hmm. I mean, some kind of agreement because that really helps a lot. It's very important. And I think especially now, you know, mm -hmm. now uh, through the pandemic, we need to connect and we need to we need to have dinners together. Although we've been together, uh, you know, as family, as friends, a lot of times now we spend uh, time at home cooking and creating recipes. But I think making time to sit at the table together or see friends, you know, have small gatherings. It's really important for everybody, for the human connection, yeah. you know, and for memories and sharing stories and, and feeling the love, you know? Well, we, we did, um, how about if we run a video of you preparing the, um, the tacos? Absolutely. That the snapper, mm -hmm. um, and then we, t I get confused with all the videos that we did, but, um, there's a video, the, um, Um, one of is a red snapper that mm -hmm. we need to clarify. Uh, mm -hmm. We you you did the red snapper, mm -hmm. but then you add the two the taco, beef. The beef tacos. You yes. really want to get me crazy. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> on the video you you you, you did um three it shows the plate it shows three tacos red snapper and two beef tacos let's talk about that and then i want to show the video you prepare the salsa it's funny it's fun it's a funny 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 story <laughs> funny video yes yeah okay but um <laughs> with a tomatillo <laughs> with tomatillo yeah we were this is the funny thing is that we were practicing the word because Even our kids, our, you know, like uh, second generation kids growing in the United States from Latino families, they say tortilla. Or they say, uh, they say uh, tortilla, they the tortilla, they, they say the tomatillo. 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 Yo. Yo. Tomatillo. 
Tomatillo, got it. <laughs> so we were practicing a lot and then you did it twice, but I caught the one that was wrong. Right, right. I'm protecting you. I did not know. I did yeah, not. So I, every day I learn something new, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> and me. I'm from Czech. How do yeah. I know? <laughs> How do I know? Yes. Well, I anyway, <laughs> tell me something. Um, so explain that video that we just saw while I did <laughs> Mm. You eat the um, sorbet with basil sugar. Well, what we prepared there was uh, fish tacos, red snapper fish tacos, and some beef tacos. I also made some mango coleslaw with uh, cilantro, fresh lime juice, um, red onions, and of course, um, the red snappers you can grill or you can put it on a pan and just kind of saute it quickly and uh, add it to the, to the tacos. But the beef tacos that Eduardo went crazy for, um, I think the trick to it is the onions, how you prepare the onions. Mm -hmm. You saute it and make them almost brown. And then you add the steak, mm -hmm. chopped steak uh, to it, and then you kind of saute it together with the onions. Mm -hmm. And then you put it in a crock pot and cook it for about but four that, hours. That that little when the caramelization of the onions makes the tacos so tasty. It, so, that's, that's but when trick. you put it on this low cooker, do you put any water or something? Yes, you can definitely put. Um, you can either use a little bit of uh, broth or just a little bit of water, and saute it or cook it for four hours until really tender. <sighs> My God, it was delicious. And then <laughs> here is the thing. Let's actually watch. So I'm from Czech Republic. But when I went to Mexico, I started to like, experiment food. And I really went, like really got into it. And I asked the recipes. I asked what's in it. With a little bit of twists and things that I, I believe would go together. So I really enjoy adding the mole into the salsa, the tomatillo, and the cilantro, lime, and all Woo this stuff that you can mix it up and make it into a delicious salsa. Why not? It's gonna be great on beef tacos. With the tomatillo salsa. Oh my god. I'm crazy with this. Crazy with cosmopolitan with Mexican in mind. Yes. yes. <laughs> At those tacos, it caught my attention that you, um, you have, um, tomatillo fresh. Mm -hmm. That's very, it, that I was, I got so, got kind of surprised because usually the people that, that I, that I get the salsas from, you go to the taquería or whatever, I think they cook. They cook the they tomatillos. They cook the tomatillos. Yes. They boil it and all that, and it's mm -hmm. cooked, and, and and it's great, you know. Mm -hmm. But having it like that, mm -hmm. it was like um, the taste is like a hit you in different parts of the of your mouth because uh, it's mm -hmm. fresh and it's kind of sour. It is. I think it's bitter. <clears throat> Bitter, you know, tomatillos bitter, are yeah. bitter. Mm -hmm. So when you cook them, you, it kind of takes the bitterness away. But if you keep them fresh, mm -hmm. and the combination of the you know the the, the lime and the tomatillos and the, and the beef tacos and the caramelized onion that is in the with the beef, I think the combination is really what makes it so special. You know the bitterness and the caramelized, almost the sweet onions. And I think that it was it was different, you know. Yes, and then you have the you know which is the, the beef. It was very very. I mean, I didn't even want to try the beef. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to say no. I'm gonna try the red snapper. The, the red snapper. I said, yes. one, you want to try one? I said no. I can't. I mean, I was full <laughs> almost. And then, but I just did one bite, and yes. I couldn't believe and it. Got that, you <laughs> because the salsa had um, 
is you put mole on it? I did put mole in it. Mo yes, okay, so you yes. got you got tomatillo. Tomatillo, mole. You got mole. Red onions. Red onions. Cilantro. Red onions. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Red it onions. Was chopped onions. Yeah, and I put it in a little food processor. Yeah. So you make it into really. It's not chunky. It's just kind of smooth. It's you very know? smooth. And then you add it to the beef tacos with a little bit of cheese on top. And it's magic. It's all you need, you know. Yes. It's very simple. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the 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 actual the actual beef it was delicious. But then mm -hmm. when you put that salsa with the mole, finished it nicely. Yeah. Very good. Uh, delicious. Um, and the and the heat on the mouth. It was mm -hmm. very interesting. How you know hits you here, hits you yes. there. Yes. We put a little bit of jalapeno. In the morning, in it, I was yeah. like, a damn, La Paulina, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> where are those? Tacos. Yeah, they, they were good. They're really, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. They were a steel heat. I feel mm -hmm. that heat, uh, that mm -hmm. kind of uh, sensation of the tomatillo fresh. That's mm -hmm. probably where we need to. That will be the best secret in here mm -hmm. is that. Uh, and then the other thing is um, oh, talking about the Coslo salad thing that you put. I kind of don't like that. Mm -hmm. But if. Some people like that. It's yes, fine. Yes. I mean, a taco with with red snapper, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. I want to really try feel Taste the snapper. The snapper. I I. Totally and you put a lot of yes. snapper, but I could feel like a all all. all flavors. Yes, yes, but, yes. But but the flavor, the the. But I didn't want to say anything mm -hmm. and get you mm -hmm. mad. But um. You would not get me mad. It's but just it, my way of doing yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 then um. How do you do that mango coslo? Because that could be very good for me. I will put it on the side and eat it. That's right. You can eat it as a side dish, mm -hmm. you know, as well. You don't. You do not have to put it on a taco. But um, what I like about the coslo, especially in the summertime, when you grill the red snapper. Now we did it uh, on the stove, but usually I grill it, so it has that smokiness to it, and it's very delicious. And by the way, I got it at Buford Highway. Uh, a package of red snapper for less than four bucks. So I just want to people know how inexpensive it is and so delicious. Where? At Buford Highway uh, Farmers Market. Okay. So, so we need to the tell them that, that they own us. Uh... <laughs> yes, yes, it's very inexpensive. <laughs> no commercial. No, no commercials, commercials. No commercials. <laughs> and then I asked, where? Where? Did she say the name of a good. No, but anyway, anyway that's anyway, good. Anyway, good. so. So yes, so once you grill the, the red snapper and you put it in a, in a little uh, tortilla or mm -hmm. a little taco, you make the kosla. And the kosla is made out of, you know, you buy the bagged kosla. Uh, you add red onion, cilantro again, almost like that salsa that you're making. Uh, you add a little bit of lime. Um, then, what did I put in it? <laughs> um, I forgot now, hold on. Uh, the mango, of course. The yeah, mango. mango. And yeah. that's what makes it delicious and sweet. You know, yes. I like the, the that it's one has thing that, that I don't like, but you did good. It yeah. was very good. Yeah. But I never like is this that that kind of um for some reason mm -hmm. um <clears throat> is very popular in the tropical areas. That kind of a mayo salsa where they put oh, the... Oh, yeah, yeah, the chipotle some, mayo. Yeah, yeah. Here, you know, mm -hmm. we're in America. Everybody likes ranch dressing and uh, the mayo and chipotle no, mayo and me, all that spicy me. mayo. So I added it as, uh, you know, as an option. You don't have to do it. But um, of course, I did the chipotle, little, um, little chipotle in a, in a jar with mayo, with smoked paprika and a little bit of cumin. And I mixed it up. And then I put it over the red snappers. Um, and then you can add the coleslaw, the mango coleslaw. And everything is just so invigorating. You know, mm -hmm. all the flavors, the citrusy taste, um, the mango is sweet. I also drizzle a tiny bit of honey on the coleslaw just to give it a little bit more sweetness for a summer kind of uh, experience, you know. Wow, wow. And then you have that basil sugar margarita on you know with it and it's like it screams summer right it is so delicious yes yes and fresh. It, it, it screams summer actually with the margaritas and uh and and um and also the mole sauce i mean the whole thing was like uh i felt like i was in a <laughs> in and and summer somewhere like uh yeah, tropical, tropical, tropical thing place. <laughs> um there's um there's a lot of work to do a book, writing book. 
Yes. That a is writing correct. book is so much. Mm -hmm. Describe me the process of producing from the beginning of the idea and, mm -hmm. oh my God, what am I doing? How many pages is this book? This page, I think... Um, now you caught me. Hold on. It's I think it's 167 pages. 80. You say uh, how many? 80, over 80 recipes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But as I said, it's a storytelling. It's a storybook. You know, I reminisce about my childhood and my upbringing because my brother and my dad, they were both chefs. So my grandparents, uh, my parents, everybody cooked. So we all gathered together and we had delicious meals and that kind of made me fall in love with food and have this obsession, minor obsession with food. And then um, over the pandemic, I wanted to, I wanted to just uh, do something with it, with my love affair with food. And I created this cookbook. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a stylist and I do photography as well so I thought you know what I can actually photograph it as well so I took lots of pictures um, um, I had big help with uh, Tim Tim Glover who's my friend and a photographer here in Atlanta and we created this book together and uh, just uh, add lots of stories from childhood that I think a lot of people can relate to you know growing up and um, also, lots of herbs and growing your herbs uh, on your balcony. Like you don't need much space to do that. You could you could grow all year round fresh herbs, add it to your food. There is uh, medicinal herbs. There is plants you can eat, edible plants. And I like so that when you said when you say uh, in the beginning. Um, what is it? This is. These are the things that I cannot cook without. That's right. And That's I, very important mm -hmm. because uh, when I saw that you use the same few things I use all the time to cook, yeah. uh, that was very nice because then you relate some people mm -hmm. or you say, hey, that's so, I'm missing that. Mm -hmm. It's a good guide right away mm -hmm. that you describe it yes. and, 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 and makes your reading, your experience with the book yes. very good. And the pictures are my amazing. Thank I mean, the, it makes a um, uh, very light, you know, it makes the whole thing flow. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, so in the beginning, as you mentioned, Eduardo, there is a, there is description, you know, the stuff that I cannot live without. There is lots of um, herbs and spices that I use in cooking that uh, you can buy pretty much anywhere or order online. Um, so there's there's lots of things, you know, lots of things um, uh, that is not just a cookbook. And how do you feel when it was already printed? Oh, I, I was just blown away. I, you know, you just, I felt very <laughs> proud that I did that. And my, the biggest idea of this cookbook was really to inspire people, you know, inspire people to, to, to cook, to, to, to gather together with friends and create little events. Have you taken to the libraries, to the to the public libraries, like I just donated? No, not yet. No, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like a few, we'll like do, a we'll couple, you know, like oh, a three, because sure, it's good sure. that people say, "Hey, mm -hmm. I know this lady. <laughs> I have seen her on Instagram." Yes. <laughs> as, as matter, actually, right now, if you want to go and uh, read a little bit more about the, the cookbook and and me, there is a, there is an article in the magazine right now, so you could actually yes, go buy it. I saw it's that right now. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, so, it's very good. So if someone wants to buy your book, mm -hmm. where where can you? They can go on the website. Okay. www.thebohemianpeach.com. Mm -hmm. They can follow me on Instagram at the underscore bohemian underscore peach. And see lots of lots of ideas that I post almost daily, you know, just to try to be connected with people and inspire people and do a lot of little cooking videos and some fun stuff and lots of pictures. So you can definitely see that and the future will be Amazon and you know, it's just it's just happened. So this is all brand new for me. I, I believe um I believe cooking mm -hmm. is something that we need to start experimenting more. Oh, for and sure. especially uh, people that um, a lot of people alone. So I think it's good to go out and, and you know, have friends and all that. But it's also mm -hmm. 
good to cook for yourself. For yourself, yes. With so much love. I mean, yeah. like, uh, enjoy. Nurture your body. N nurture, you know, your yeah, soul. tell your body that you love them. So you know what? Yes. And, and I also call it the cooking therapy. You know, when you cook, you create something. <laughs> and then... You know, I share my food with neighbors and uh, my kids and friends. I have friends over all the time, and um, and it's just it's just such a social thing too. You mm -hmm. know that you could do and really be connected to people. Absolutely. Well, there's a movie called Hot for uh, like 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 Water for Chocolate in Mexico. I, with that movie, it's like a, it was awakening. Yeah. For all the people to start directors and mm -hmm. to hey, let's get serious mm -hmm. like, uh, about this. You can do it here. Yeah. So they start doing great movies in Mexico, and then slowly they start coming to Hollywood, mm -hmm. and now they're winning this and that and the, because they they have some this in its DNA. Yeah. So um, hot like water for chocolate. Other than beautiful production, all that the story is freaking amazing is it i can't wait to see it and yes. and and when you see it well i'm gonna just spoiler you know it's, <laughs> i'm sorry but it's it's it tells you that food is is them freaking magic it is it is and 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 how this lady was able i don't know should i tell you or not but maybe not maybe not oh. but do you know what Then I fell in love with Frida Kahlo. She Ooh. was an artist, just like me. She was an amazing cook. I even have her <coughs> cookbook that she, you know, her sister, I think, uh, put together after uh, Frida's death. And um, I just, I'm in love with the culture, with the colors, with the food, with the love affair she had for Diego. It's no, that was her story. husband for two, for twice. Yeah. Yeah. I named my like, my daughter Frida. Yeah. <laughs> after him, her, and I named my son Diego after oh, him. We named, we named, we did, there we did. You go. So yeah, you we love them. We love them, them, and yes, and, yes, and, yes, uh, yes, yes. and our family, we love Frida and Diego, and they were very. Back in the days, uh, oh, the in Mexico days. was full of art. Yes. It was way too deep. Yeah. It was, yeah. I mean, like uh, intrinsic in the culture, like mm -hmm. uh, Siqueiros and mm -hmm. so many other painters and writers and. Nobel Prize by yeah. writers and and all that but anyway going back to um, the food <laughs> I want to say about this movie like water for chocolate watch it please because will. it's so freaking magical <laughs> and food is your poison mm -hmm. and food is your medicine medicine yes but also it's not just the ingredients mm -hmm. but it is the magic the person puts in the food that's that's absolutely correct <laughs> it is i was you about can, I, you I, can I, put let's magic let's move on from food. that movie because then i have to tell you <laughs> what is behind that freaking <clears throat> magic um but um and and how How fast can you do that red snapper? I mean, oh, how it's I'm, super fast. Super fast, it's super right? fast. Yeah. Chuk, 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 you chuk. just, you know, the red snapper, you just put it on a grill or on a pan, uh, quickly saute it or grill it. Then you have the tacos, heat up the tacos, make the coleslaw. You know, you buy the coleslaw already in a bag. Uh -huh. So you just chop the red onions, the mango, cilantro, lime, drizzle of honey. You have the coleslaw. Then you make the little sauce if you wish. And that's it. Those are the red snapper tacos. They're so easy, you know. If, if then, you if you had a date mm -hmm. out of all your recipes and and you want to really impress, impress. that person, what which one is the 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 most that you, you, you did the chicken something the other day? Yes. Uh, uh, the chicken. I do chicken uh, marsala. I do chicken picada. I mean, which which one is the most? Uh, the, 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 the 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 you want to impress someone and say. Go to page one and 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 prepare this for your guy Date. or for the girl, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And and she will be. Well, I have to say, from all my <laughs> recipes, um, by the way, they yeah. all have a little twist. So there are traditional recipes, like for example, chicken picada, chicken marsala, but they have a little <laughs> twist to them. So um, everybody's favorite favorite recipe in the entire book is the chicken parmesan that I make. 
And sometimes I even put eggplant on top of the chicken parmesan. You know, you can or you can make it just the vegetarian version of it. But it's such a delicious food. You know, everybody just goes crazy over this. Or um, I make my bread, my own bread or my own pasta. There's a simple tomato pasta that is just divine. And I learned it when I went to Tuscany and I did a cooking class in Tuscany. And it's just a, such a simple, simple tomato-based pasta, you know, uh, with uh, garlic and lots of basil and fresh um, parsley. And that's it, you know? So you could do, there's so many recipes that people love. And then of course, this uh, crazy sorbet that I make with the basil sugar. This is amazing. It is, um, it's Very a nice refreshing. margarita. You can make it into margarita? You can make it into a... a a sorbet. Oh, this one is like a, you made everything very good. Sí, you you kind of keep the Mexican in mind, but you do it. You don't cosmopolitan. care. Cosmopolitan. What did you describe mm -hmm. me? How did you describe mm -hmm. me? The Mexican? No, the cosmopolitan with Mexican in mind. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, definitely. Cosmopolitan uh, tacos with Mexican in mind. That's right. Uh, but that's um, right. like in these margaritas, um, you put vodka. I put vodka, yes. Um, I ran out of the tequila the other day. <laughs> really? <laughs> but you could... It was almost full. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. But um, but what I want to say, you How could you make it with out? What do you do on the or, weekend? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, tequila. You could use both, you know, whatever uh, suits your soul. <laughs> okay, 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 yeah, yeah. But, I, uh, <laughs> I put was it, good. No, I'm already already hit on me that vodka. That was delicious, but okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's <is> great. <laughs> so yeah, so you can make this delicious drink, and it's not heavy. You know, for a date, it's a great date. So you take, Dessert. you put on your strawberries Strawberry or peaches. You could do cantaloupe. I tried it with the cantaloupe. It's delicious <laughs> with the cantaloupe. Uh, we describe it on the website. I made a whole video for you guys if you want to take a look on a on a website um, how to make this delicious drink or you could buy my book and see it in there but uh, buy the book buy of course, the book. Yes, of, course. of course it's a must it's yes, a, labor a must. Of love, people or you no <laughs> it's not or you no you buy the book and then so this margarita okay mm -hmm. or slash sorbet mm -hmm. uh, either way you uh cut the fruit in chunks you know peaches strawberries cantaloupe in the chunks you put it in a ziploc bag and you freeze it Mm -hmm. Then you take the chunks out, put it in a blender, mm -hmm. put a simple syrup that is made just out of sugar and hot water, you know, you, you, blend, you um, melt the sugar. Then you put it into the blender with the chunks of fruit, tequila or um, vodka, some lime juice, and then you blend it with a simple syrup. You blend it all together and you put it in a deep dish, freeze it. And the best thing about this, if you have a date, you know, if you're single and you have a date, um, you don't have to stress about it because it could be sitting in your fridge for a whole week, you know? Yes. And then you take it out, then your date comes and you just uh, put it in the glasses with, you know, your toppings. You could do lime and basil, fresh basil, or you can do some fresh fruit and it looks really impressive. And then you put it in a, in a glasses and then you make, well, you have to make the basil sugar because that is a must. It's a crunchy texture. It's just delicious. And you put, a, you know, you put it again in a little food processor. I put sugar, cane sugar and basil or mint, blend it. And then you make this green sugar that you put on top of this beautiful orangey margarita or sorbet. And that's it. So when you're ready for your dessert, you just scoop it up into your either a bowl or margarita glasses, let it melt, and voila, you have a drink. You, mm -hmm. And the other thing is, when when then then you realize that, that you can do your sugars like that. Yeah. You can keep yeah. it. I mean, for my coffee, you mm -hmm. can put um, you cinnamon, can mix it. cinnamon. You can make a cinnamon sugar for sure. And then when you drink your coffee, it has a. Mm, you can make vanilla sugar. You can put a vanilla bean into your sugar. Yes. In the container. No, you can just leave it in a container and the sugar will absorb the aroma, you know, of the of the fresh or, or of the vanilla bean. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, you can make your own vanilla sugar. So your favorite for a date of your book, which one is? Uh, for a date? Um, yeah, you someone, you want to impress someone. I don't know if I want to impress someone. It depends what also season it is. 
So this book what is, is the ingredient that it, that creates more like um, according to your knowledge, whatever? Aphrodisiac. Aphrodisiac. Uh, yeah. What, um, what is that one? The, uh, ooh, I, wow. Well, definitely this margarita. That's uh, it's got alcohol in it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's also there's other foods. Yeah. yeah that that they kind of zzz, kind of gives like you, gets you gets you yeah. excited. No? Ah, you don't I, know. You know what? All my food uh, pe gets people excited. <laughs> yeah. Look how excited you are with those, <laughs> yeah. with those tacos. It's true, those beef it's tacos. true. I was like, uh, what the heck is going on? I think it depends on? On, a, on a season, too. You but know? That, that, I'm going to tell you, that tomatillo sauce, that yeah. tomatillo being fresh. Made it, a big difference. Big difference. Yeah. Yeah. That was very, very sexy food. Yeah, that was very, sexy food. very. It it's really it's kind a messy of messy food, but sexy food. Yeah, <laughs> yes, 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 and so simple. You gotta, tienes. Eh, voy a repetir. Can I say all this in Spanish? Absolutely. Bueno, eh, Paulina Brand hizo hizo su su libro, verdad, y que se llama um, The Bohemian Peach. Está muy bien producido. Entonces hicimos un, unos videos para mostrar este qué tan fácil puedes hacer. Pues una, un, un buen, un, una buena cena, ¿no? Entonces hicimos el, el video donde, donde sale este, ella cocinando un, un guachinango, un red snapper. Y luego se pone en tortilla calentita y luego le pones una, pues una ensalada de... ¿Cómo se le llama eso? Repollo con mango... What else does he have? The the, the coleslaw. Coleslaw. Yeah. Uh, there is red and cilantro. Red onions. La, lime. Red onions. Mm -hmm. O sea, es, yes, cebolla roja. Mm -hmm. Este uh, mango. Cilantro, mango. Cilantro. And a dash of lime. Un poquito de limón. Mm -hmm. And Entonces, little, you could put a little a drizzle of honey into it to make it a little sweeter. Ah. For the ladies. <laughs> for the ladies. No, for us too. And then um. De, ella hizo así la salsita que es con mayonesa con también este chile uh -huh. chipotle cumin. un poquito de cumin cumin and uh, smoked paprika and it's, ah ya yeah, papik pap mm -hmm. it's one it. of the ingredients that you never go without mm -hmm. right? smoked paprika yes that's that's really you never go anywhere without your paprika my paprika yes uh, it's, a, it's an important <laughs> one Gro growing um growing in, in, in your house with chefs Uh, as a kid, uh, the, what was the the main thing you it was cooked in your house? What, what dumplings, was dumplings? Because I'm from Czech Republic what? and we have dumplings. So in my book, there is actually a recipe for Czech dumplings with. Um, can you do them? Roast at yes, home? Yes, you can make them at hey. home. In Hey, oh, I want, it is so uh, um, delicious, and I know. especially in the fall, winter months, you know, when, <laughs> when you're kind of just hibernating yeah. a little Stop bit. It. Stop <laughs> it. I don't know what I got into. I'm hungry, yes. and, and then I'm doing a cooking uh, show with that's you. That's right, that's right. Um, or something like that. Um, but um, So, dumplings. And then, how is it something that it's from Czech? That is a traditional, yes. That is definitely a signature dish for the Czech Republic. It's dumplings, a sauerkraut, or I thought it was cabbage. more Asian, more... No, no. It's it's very Czech. It's uh, kind of a German-based, I would say, with the dumplings really? and sauerkraut and uh, pork, roasted pork. Definitely, definitely. But that is the signature dish for Czech Republic. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Well, we're gonna make in cosmopolitan. The same way you mess up everything in Mex uh, Mexican dishes, we, we're gonna do the, the dumplings with chorizo con huevo. Ooh, ah! Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Love you it, know what? Why not? <laughs> you know, have you tried chorizo con huevo? No. Well, chorizo is like a sausage, right. but Mexican sausage chorizo, yeah. is so good. It's very delicious. And then huevo yeah. is eggs. Oh. Oh, of course I had that before. Okay, I had that. <laughs> Do you would you agree that it would be so nice to have food trucks? I remember when Trump in the beginning she was like uh, doing all these things against Hillary and all that, mm. and he said one time, "If Hillary wins, I promise you there will be a taco mobile." Uh, how do you say it? The food truck? 
they put Mexican food trucks all over the, the United States and a lot of people <laughs> like wow nice <laughs> that would be so freaking well maybe that's a good idea for me maybe I'm gonna open a food truck with, the, with those delicious that's beef what tacos. I was thinking <laughs> but um, the bohemian pizza that's um do you do you enjoy cooking like a or would would it be the same if you are chef in a restaurant I was and ah, the stress that. and all? Yeah. Because then it's not gonna be fun anymore. Right, right. I don't know. One thing Nurture. is loving people and another another one is serving people. Yes, yes. But I think I would really enjoy that. I would actually enjoy that. Being in the stress of I a should. kitchen. That's This... how I share my love is through food. <laughs> One of my first jobs uh, in <laughs> 1992 here was a uh, 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 was the guy called me sous chef. I was not. I was like you a, are not so, a sous chef. No, no, no. He's like a, you know, help me in the kitchen. I know you will be good. One day, I burned the whole the whole spinach key. How do you call that thing? That it is very Mediterranean kind of a cake. That he says, um, oh, the, the like a Greek, pipe. the the um, the spinach with the feta and the, the filo dough. What do you call it's it? It's like a cake. Yes. And yes, everybody yes, comes yes. and get. Like, it's like a pizza. Oh, it's, it's like a quiche kind of a thing, right? That one. Yeah. That one. So it was an oven. Say, hey, you take care. Keep keep an eye. Well, the whole thing. That's what people eat there. Hmm. I burned them all. Well, you, you should not be a chef, I would suggest. No, you do a radio no, show. No, I end up in the... End you the, better do a radio oh show. Oh my God, the face of the owner. Oh, I can only on imagine. Me. Mm. I, always he was so nice with me and everything. Yeah. And with that day, my God, it's like, a, <laughs> don't do that to me. I mean, tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me I need to be paying attention to something. <laughs> I don't have that mind. Right, you know, I'm, right. just get me on something and I'll do it. <laughs> But um, I forget. I mean, there was not a watch or anything or where, mm -hmm. you know. So I end up being the dishwasher. <laughs> well, you know, we need them too, For a little right? bit, because they, that was a normal one. They're needed as well. As I try chefs. my best. I do my best. And I really want to learn. Yeah. Well, I learned how to, like, uh, I never cooked before like that in my life. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I cook all my life little things, yeah. sandwiches and meet with you know some yeah, some things yeah. that I learned with my sister and my mom sure but um I learned how to cut cut with um with your fingers like this mm -hmm. and instead of like I, I used to do yeah, good good yeah. good so now so he he taught me mm -hmm. the chef taught, taught me how to how do to it cut. something that that you would like to share regarding your book or your mm -hmm. life and food Uh-oh, you put me on a spot. What do I want to share? Well, I don't know. I might I might, I might just, get something out I'm of you. I'm just happy to be here, Eduardo. I'm, I'm really appreciative that you took me on this show and I can share share my little story about passion. You mm -hmm. know, passion for food, passion for um, creating little events and connecting with people, you know. And this is my whole purpose, really, to, to just spread love You know, mm -hmm. and I think that I spread it through food. And love comes back to you. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And just, you know, enjoying every day. I think people really, I know it's very hard to say because we've been in, in pandemic for a whole year. But I, I really, when I wake up in the morning, I am so thankful just to be here, you know. And I hope that people appreciate it too, that they we get up and we are able to do things and create things and live a life and look at the beautiful weather today outside you know oh my god so i think i, I get have anxiety this when when passion for life yes and i hope that that people have that too at this point you know i hope they don't give up i hope i hope for everybody and especially with spring coming up there's some um, now that you got a little bit of um um I like this meditation. I'm going to say what it starts like. It says, a new beginning. And it says, last night darkness, no matter how black, cannot stop today's sun from rising. It's a new beginning. That right? Is right. Uh, That and is and right. The, one of the things in the whole meditation, because it goes a few pages, um, it tells me, people say, and it's true. Mm -hmm. it, it is logical. Right. 
that says, well, there's always light at the tunnel, at the end of the mm -hmm. tunnel. It's not true. Mm -hmm. It's, there's always light in the dark. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the molecule. You just and have to there's find light. The there's light. light right here. You have to find a light that ignites you. Yeah, you know? and then and you sets focus your soul on that. soul on fire and you want to do something for yourself. Even if it's not important to the world, even if it's just important to you, you know, I hope that people have the courage to get up in the morning and do it again and over and over again and see the beauty in every day, in every moment, and, you know, and just just little things, joyful things that make people happy, you know, that that they go like, you know what, the day was a really good day. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like me on Saturday, I was like, damn it. Where are the fucking titles? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Today is a new brand, is a brand new day for making some good something, cycles. Something good. It, Every um, day is an opportunity, you know? Every day we have opportunity to start again. If yesterday was really bad, I feel like we have a chance, you know? Uh, it's Another day is giving us a chance to do this again and try it, try to do something different if we weren't happy yesterday. Well, and now that you get a little bit deeper and deeper, <laughs> let's get deeper. Let's get deeper. Let's get deeper and deeper. It says, life is nothing. Look at this one. There is no greater comfort and blessing than the knowledge, pay attention, that life has no meaning. Mm -hmm. And people, some people say, what? What the God? I grew, I mean, I grew up with this philosophy back when I was a kid, because mm -hmm. I was, I had the guts mm -hmm. to go and pay for a very, very, very expensive course. It was Werner Erhard, mm -hmm. big, big culture thing or whatever. They had a lot of issues in the United States, Christianity and all that. But it's all about, um, we create so much damn meanings for everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is this, this is that, this is happening because this is... Uh, <laughs> and then we're freaking trapped every day. Yeah. We're freaking trapped in the corner, corner because something. We don't have the, the tools or capability to open that, that page. Yes. Yeah, and find a blank and, and write... Uh, I, actually, there's find a blank one and write something there. Some people write some things there. <laughs> and okay. then, um, but anyway, to create a blank page all the time. It says, so your life has nothing like a fixed destiny or purpose. Mm -hmm. That stupid thing of destiny. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why people keep <laughs> dealing with that. Therefore, all you have to do is assign your own life meaning and value and devote yourself to create creative activity for realizing that value. That's what it is. That's what it is. You put yourself every freaking day in 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 the middle of no, no work. No, I mean, a lot of issues and all that, a lot of problems and where is it going to be? When is it going to end? Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. And instead of you just uh, crying, you got this. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so very much. And heck, what is going to happen? You don't know. We don't but know. Just keep creating just shit. Just keep doing life. Just keep mm -hmm. living your life and do the best you can and enjoy it. You know, be thankful for every day that we get because you never know, you know, and you just got to create. One more opportunity. So, what else am I missing? Algo que se me está pasando preguntarte. Is there something? That I should that, that you want to that, that you that that, that we, we just you just want to share or say something. Uh, I, uh, I'm just I'm just happy to be here. You okay. Know? I'm, I'm Good. just yeah. I think we covered it all. I think um, I'm really happy that uh, I had the opportunity to come here and talk to you about my book. That was a big achievement for me, and I'm very proud. And uh, I hope that people enjoy it. You know. Yes. We get, do you still have more? Of that margarita? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have a picture. And then, then we, let, let's see. Margarita. Uh, let's